Thank you. Thank you, Dasni, ma'am. I think there's, there are a lot of transformations happening today, physically, mentally, and uh, business-wise. A lot of transformations that uh, will be seen and be facilitating this transformation on this special occasion. All right, so this is Krishna Arjun. Uh, I'm a tech entrepreneur, international table business coach, CSR consultant, part-time MC, and online event specialist. So on public demand, our MC Tasneem is back with us, co-hosting this final segment of the evening. And uh, let's know about the first speaker. Before that, I have a question for all the audience. Use the chat section for this. Who said these three magical words? And the words are, Please do pay attention. Nation wants to know. Okay, there are four words. Nation wants to know who said this, who coined these words, who said these magical words for the first time. You can use the chat section in YouTube. I think this is not just for the Indian audience. People from all over the world know these words. Any guesses? Okay, we are getting the answers in the... Zoom chat, anyone in the YouTube chat who'd like to attempt this? Lovely. Tasneem, you can look at the YouTube chat. <laughs> yeah, Tiral sir, fantastic. He says we won't say his name, the one who shouldn't be named, like Lord, Lord Voldemort. Okay. Ashok Singh, sir, was the first person to get it right. Yes, it's our very own Arnab Goswami. And for the very first time, not just the nation, but the entire world wants to know about the three vital questions that our speaker is going to talk about. To tell you more about the speaker, he's done his Bachelor's of Computer Science from University of Pune. He's an avid uh, reader of spiritual as well as uh, self-help books. He's an Aam Admi and loved by people. He's a people person. Uh, he also is a licensed global psycho geometrics facilitator. When you give a gap, it becomes, uh, it, it's read in a different way, global psycho, then geometrics. I have no idea what that means. I would love to know more about that. And he's India's first certified three vital questions facilitator, internationally licensed, heal your life seminar leader. He holds a diploma in experiential education. And he is a life coach, business coach, parenting coach, NLP practitioner. And he's also licensed access bar practitioner he is a certified aura reader and healer certified chakra reader and healer and also a pranic healer our next speaker is going to talk about the three vital questions and mr prantik is is the speaker prantik sir if you're here with us over to you thank you thank you so much thank you so much uh, for this opportunity and thank you so much amplify and uh, world transformational day uh, i welcome all of you and uh, I'm grateful to get this opportunity to speak to all of you. Now, uh, it is so amazing. It is so amazing that uh, today when we see how the technology has evolved, if you look at the computers now, okay, and if you look at the computers earlier, we can't even imagine the way the technology and the computers have evolved. Nowadays, the computers have become much more slimmer, much more smaller, but faster and with, with more features day by day. Computers are no more computers today. They are tablets and they are watches. They don't, don't even look like they are computers. However, the tangible nature of the hardware gives us an impression that it is responsible for the software. Whereas it is exactly the opposite. It's the software that tells how the hardware should work. It, it, uh, the software tells how the hardware should process the information. And that is why for, for any upgradation of the computer or the mobile or uh, the laptop, every month we get an update, an information, update your computer, update your system. And we know if we do not update it, the computer's lags, it does not process fast enough and probably it can invite viruses. Well, this is the uh, evolution of computers. What about human being? Humans have evolved long way back. And if you talk about the updation of human, then uh, in terms of hardware, uh, we have got stuck 
on this body. There is there is no upgradation. There is no possibility of upgradation, and we are stuck in this from last two hundred thousand years. So the only way humans can evolve, human can become much more updated, is by changing the software. And I call that software as human operating system. So what is basically a human operating system? It is a lens. Okay, it is how we view the world. It's a lens that filters the complex reality around us, and gives us a small picture of it, a clarity of it. Most importantly, this human operating system is: it provides the basic information about the world, assumption, beliefs, and above all, it influences our behavior. So today, we'll be talking more about the human operating system and how does three vital question. Support in understanding or upgrading the human operating system. Uh, as mentioned, I am Prantik. I am director of Vipran Enterprises. I am India's first 3BQ facilitator. And uh, in addition to what uh, I was introduced as, uh, I am also Indian Achiever Award winner for my contribution in organizational development. So let's understand how what is the role of 3BQ. What are those three vital question which will help us upgrade our human operating system? It's a very very powerful tool. To handle workplace and personal drama. All right, so let's talk about human operating system. How can we identify our human operating system? What if what is that tool that will help us identify our own operating system? All those people, I would recommend sit with a pen and diary. Okay, take some notes. It's very very powerful. So the tool to identify our own operating system is F I S B E Frisbee. I know you have heard Frisbee. But this is FISB. Okay, what is this FISB? FISB is an acronym. Okay, F stands for focus. It's a mental model. It's how a human being operates. F is focus. I S is inner state. You can also name it as emotional state. And B E stands for behavior. So it is FISB: focus, inner state, and behavior. Now to understand it much more better, okay, what is FISBE and how does it operate uh, within the human being? Okay, well, how can we call this as a human operating system? Let me give an example. Now, uh, are you able to see the sea beach? Chandra Shikhar ji, you are there in this in this room. So, uh, do you like sea beaches? If you can uh, unmute and answer, if you choose to answer. Yes, I I see beaches. Okay, you like beaches? Okay, so now just imagine. You go to this beach, okay? It's the evening time, uh, very, very, very serene environment, and you see this couple, and you can see that they are in immense love. The idea is not to disturb them. The idea is just try to understand what kind of thought process they would be carrying right now. If you just go to this couple, the the question is to all everybody who is on YouTube. Also, you can choose to answer uh, in the chat, uh, YouTube chat. You go to this couple and just ask. How are you feeling this evening? Okay. Obviously, the idea is not to disturb, but just trying to understand how are you feeling this evening. Mostly, the answer would come as, "Ah, oh, we are feeling so lovely. I mean, we are in so much in love. This environment is so beautiful. It's so serene, so amazing. We just want this time to stop. We do not want this time to move on." This is one example. You now look at the right hand side. So, so Chandra Shikharji, you see another couple sitting this way, which obviously probably is representing they could be sad. Now, if you ask this, ask the same question to this couple, how are you feeling this evening? Probably the answer would be, oh, don't ask this. This uh, person does not understand me. I'm so frustrated because of it. I'm I'm so I'm in so much tense. I can't work well in my office. I'm I'm not able to operate well, and uh, my boss is also firing me. My projects are incomplete. This will be an answer. So now, if you see very, very carefully, it's the same environment for both of them, both the couples. It's the same environment, but two different internal human orientation, internal human operating system. That means it's not the external thing that really affects the human uh, the, the behavior. It's actually the internal operation, internal orientation that affects our behavior. So now let's understand what is this orientation? What is this 
a human orientation all about through the model called as FISB. FISB is focus. Where are they focusing? If you look at the first couple, they were focusing on what is happening good around them, what is happening good in between them. So because they are focused on what is happening good around them, what is happening good between them, their inner state is of happiness, is bliss. And that's why the behavior is they are, they are in so much of resonance. They are in so much of love. And they welcomed us in a beautiful way. If you go to the second couple, their focus was what's happening wrong around them. What's the problem around them? So that's why the inner state would be frustrated, angry, upset, anxiety. And that's why the, the behavior was a reactive behavior. This is a FISB example, how we operate. Two different orientation. Now, something interesting. Most of the people, okay, most of the people I'm talking about, we have a default orientation. What is this default orientation? Let me give you an example with the example of ship. Okay, ships, when they travel, okay, if it's daytime, then the, looking at the sun, they're able to operate, okay? Uh, which side is north, which side is east, west, they can use it and they use the sun to sail around. If it's night, then probably looking at the pole star, they are able to identify which side is north and they will choose the direction. However, if the weather is cloudy, okay, the pole star is also not available in the night time. So they use an instrument called as magnetic compass. And this magnetic compass has a property, it has a default orientation to point always towards the north. The orientation of this uh, compass is always to point towards north. Similarly, we all have a default orientation, which is called as problem orientation. Here, in this default orientation, the focus mostly remains on the problem. What is happening wrong around me? What is happening wrong in my office? What is happening wrong in my life? What is happening wrong in my, with my body? What is happening wrong uh, in my relationship? So the whole idea is focusing on the problem. Now, now I, I, uh, some, some people might say, oh, no, I'm, I'm uh, outcome oriented. I'm, I'm uh, solution oriented. Exactly. Where this default orientation is coming from? It's coming from the evolution that we have come from. The problem, I mean, we were designed to be fearful. We were designed to operate out of fear. Okay, a child when born is born out of two fears. Fear of loud noise and fear of falling down. So we are ingrained with a lot of fear. So this default orientation is coming from that part of the brain where the focus is mostly on the problem. What's going wrong? What's happening? What can be the worst case scenario? Now, if you are focused more on the problem, what kind of inner state anxiety, uh, what kind of inner state, emotional state will be inside of you. It will be mostly anxiety, anxious. Uh, uh, you, you could be uh, frustrated. You could be in, uh, in, in upset mode, irritated most of the time. And this anxiety gives birth to your behavior, which is the reactive behavior. Okay, this is where we have to understand something like uh, right from the beginning, okay, this, this whole business uh, slot that we are talking about, we are talking about business growth, we are talking about profit sales, we are talking about uh, getting a team, okay, aligning the team. Now, when everything is aligned, and that is where the whole situation starts about handling problems, about handling the drama among the team. Okay, what is that thing that if not taken care of, will not lead us to good sales, will not lead us to good co cohesive environment is this default orientation. Okay, so now if the focus is on problem, the inner state will be anxiety and the behavior will be reactive behavior, which is either of a fright, a fright, freeze and a peace. These are the four behaviors any person will operate. Like for example, people will get aggressive, they will try to fight, nay, yeah, it's not possible, it has to happen this way, they will fight. Some people, they flight, okay? They, oh, I, I can't handle this, okay? Do whatever you want to, they, they move away. They can't handle the problem. Some people get freezed. Oh, shucks, I can't handle this. Somebody come and save me. I'm not able to think, they get numb. 
And fourth, the another behavior is appease. They try to get along. Okay, no problem. Probably let's get along. Okay, we will find a solution. Probably okay. I, it's my mistake. They try to placate. They try to please, and they try to appease. Okay, all the people who are sitting with a uh, pen and diary, just write down what is your default orientation. What is your first default orientation? Okay, is it fight? Is it flight? Freeze or appease? Okay, choose that. Okay, and this is not just default orientation. It is default problem reactive orientation. So that's why this is called as problem orientation. If you remember, the second couple was operating out of problem orientation. Okay. Now this this does not stop here. Now, what happens when you are in problem orientation? So let's understand that. So let's for, for just for an example. You wanted a report. You wanted your your team member to give you a certain report by 9 a.m. this morning. The moment you reached the office, you saw the report is not ready. Okay. Now you shout. Okay, you, you might shout. You might just um, yell at that person. What, what I had asked you for that report. Why aren't you giving it? Okay. So now you chose fight as one of the response. So the question to you is, what is the immediate intention? Okay, what is the immediate intention behind your reaction, behind the action that you have taken, behind the fight reaction that you have chosen to? I'm just taking that as an example. Okay, if you look very carefully, you shouted because one, one of the expectations were not fulfilled. You shouted because you wanted that thing to be done. And with the shout, basically you are trying to either avoid the problem or get, get rid of the problem. Okay, at this point, my problem should be solved. At this point, my, my uh, reaction should be able to give me the report. So basically to avoid or get rid of. You can take care of anywhere. Any reaction that you use is just temporary to avoid the problem or get rid of the problem. If you, if you agree to this, please write in the chat box, in the, in the YouTube chat box. Yes, I agree. It's mostly to avoid or just get rid of the problem temporarily. It's not permanent solution. I'm not using the word solution. So now what happens, okay? So a problem orientation does not stop here. Now you have uh, shouted, okay? You have shouted at your employee or your colleague, give me the report, how many times shall I sh uh, shout at you? You shouted and you got the report. Now just think over these questions. These are very, very important questions, very, very powerful questions. Now, if your reaction is successful, that means you shouted and you got the report. You shouted at your employee or the colleague and you got the report in your hand in next 20 minutes. That means you got your desired result. What happens to the intensity of the problem now? You can write in the chat box. Okay, you shouted, you got the report. What happens to the intensity of the problem? It reduces. Okay, the intensity of the problem reduces. If the intensity of the problem reduces, what happens to the anxiety? Okay. It also reduces. reduces. Yes, perfect. Mr. Chandrasekhar, you may answer that. Now, the problem has reduced, which in turn, the anxiety has reduced. What happens to your reaction now? the reactive behavior, the shouting behavior that you had operated from, that reactive behavior also reduces. Now comes the most important part. Okay, you shouted, you got the report. So temporarily the problem got solved. The intensity of the problem got solved. The anxiety got solved. So your reaction got reduced. Now what happens to your focus on that problem? Okay. What will eventually happen to the intensity of focusing on the problem? So the focus on the problem also reduces. Okay, because you got the report. So now you're no more in that problem zone. Okay, you got the report, you're okay with that. So now you're not no more focused on the problem. Now the question, have you actually solved the problem? Mr. Chandrasekhar, you are in the room, so just help me answer. Have you actually solved the problem? No, 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 ah. no. Now, because 
since the problem was not solved, not completely solved, not thoroughly solved, what will happen? What happens to the problem that you had just fixed? What will happen? The problem is fixed. That's all. It's a temporary fix. It's a temporary. Again, next day uh, morning, something come out. Exactly. Next day, the return of the problem. Because you have not empowered that person to, to finish the report, to write the report on time. You have not empowered that. You have just shouted. He haphazardly, any which ways he has found and gave, gave you the report. So the problem, the empowerment has not been done. So the, the problem will return again, maybe in that in that face or somebody, somebody else's face. It will come, the problem will come. The moment the problem comes, the cycle continues, high anxiety, and because of high anxiety, you, you will again have a high reaction. High reaction will temporarily fix the problem. Temporary fixing of the problem will lessen your anxiety. Lessening of the anxiety will give you less drive to solve the problem. Now this problem is solved for some time, so I'm released. So basically, it is not a problem or solving orientation, but a reactive orientation. Now in this problem orientation, the entire focus on the problem remains till the anxiety is reduced. If the anxiety is reduced, now you no more are bothered to take care of the problem. Just, just look over. I mean, I'll give you a simple, as simple as that. Uh, you, you are driving and you're stuck in bottleneck. You're stuck in a traffic. You shout, you are yelling, oh, what, what the hell, no, no police is there to take care. There, is, there are no uh, rules and regulations happening over here. You shout, okay? Now, next minute, somebody comes and gives you the way. Done. The anxiety reduced and you reach office on time. But does, is the problem permanently solved? No. Next morning, again, you might get solved, stuck. So the internal orientation is anxiety provoked. It's anxiety triggered. We are only focused on the problem till the time the anxiety is reduced. Anxiety reduced, the problem is not, not being focused upon. Now, look, look at what is the effect of this problem orientation in organization. Okay, it's a Gallup research, not my research, it's the Gallup research which says uh, 350 US billion dollar was lost in productivity because of negative behavior, reactive behavior in the organization. 350 US billion dollar, can't even imagine, it's a huge sum of money. And now look at another beautiful part. 40% of the time managers spend their time in solving interpersonal problems, not in productivity. Okay, look, look at the number, 40%. Now imagine 40% being taken care in productivity, the $350 billion will be taken care of. Okay, attrition rate is just because of the negative behavior. Okay, so these are the uh, result of uh, reactive orientation. Many of you must have heard this. People join the company, but they leave the manager. The reason for leaving the manager is not appreciation. The reason of leaving the manager is reactive behavior. Okay, now this does not just, uh, uh, what do you say? Um, it is not just uh, uh, stuck to the organization part, it is also in the relationship. How many of you feel that you are stuck in a never ending cycle of feeling frustrated, being hopeless, guilty, uh, being resentful in your relationship? You, may, you may not have to write, just be aware of that. Okay, are you constantly trying to fix the same problem with your partner in your family, but never getting the solution? Just, just think over. Okay. How many times have you been saying this? Oh, I'm trapped in this relationship. I try hard, so hard, but nothing ever improves. It's over. I'm quitting. I'm not doing this anymore. Okay. Maybe it wasn't that bad, but I was being very unreasonable. If only they change, it would get better. The situation will get better. How many of this time, how, how many of you have been saying this all the time in your relationships? I think so we are done with the time. Sure, done. So the new FISB is, okay, being outcome orientation, okay? The moment you focus on the outcome, you will be inspired and you can will take small baby steps. So that is the three vital question. The three vital questions are simple. Uh, one, where, are, where am I putting my focus on problems or outcomes? 
how am i feeling anxiety or insp inspiring what actions am i taking reacting or taking creative decisions okay so uh, this was the whole idea choice is always yours new way old way these are uh, my information to get connected with me and uh, thank you so much for this opportunity and thank you so much for uh, allowing me and being a part of this wtd thank you so much thank you so much uh, prantik sir that was fantastic action reaction problems everything summarized in 20 minutes brilliantly done guys if you have any questions feedback comment you know what to do write to prantik that's his email id lovely thank you sir uh, tasneem ma'am yes my friend tell me krishna uh, if you could do the honor of introducing our next speaker please definitely i'm just about to do that i'm i'm looking for uh, the beautiful words that i need to tell i mean i i need to speak about him and right now my phone is uh, upset with me so i'm kind of trying to you know uh unko manane ki koshish kar rahi hu ek second ruk jaiye phone ko mana rahi hu look at look at my time mujhe phone ko manana pad raha hai 